In today's tutorial, we're painting this. So stick around. Since I love to give options whenever we're doing things, I have two pieces of wood here that we're going to use. One, because not everyone has access to live edge wood, correct? Not everyone has access to this. And two, I want you to see that it really does not matter if you're using a piece that you can purchase from Home Depot or Lowe's or at a lumber yard and have cut down, you can still accomplish the same exact hand painted tree that is absolutely beautiful no matter what type of wood that you're using. Just to give you a really nice close up of how gorgeous this is, these are usually a little bit more expensive. I paid, I think it was 15 for a four foot piece and as you can see it's a little bit longer down here than it is here and even further down the board it was even wider so it's not like these things are completely symmetrical and it's not a big deal to me because you know I love rustic things anyhow for me it was important to do it this way so you guys had options and you did not feel discouraged if you didn't have access to this and you felt like it would only turn out this way if we did it on this. This I purchased from Home Depot and it is a one by 10 and it was four foot. It was in their pre-cut section and I love that little section. Does your Home Depot have a pre-cut section? I love it. And in case you didn't know, you can get longer boards like this and cut them down. You can have, if you don't like tools and let's say you resell and things like that and you wanna be able to create stuff like this because you can paint or even if you can't paint, you can use stencils and stuff like that to create trees on pieces like this. You can get, they have eight foot boards, 10 foot boards, huge boards like this and you can go to Home Depot and just tell them, hey, cut me down X amount of pieces into X amount of sections and they'll do that for you and then you just got to bring it home and sand it down so you're able, you know, willing, ready and able to go. All right, so let's get our paint going. Trees are not just one color, right? So I'm going to be using these three different color greens. They're going to give me different effects and it's going to allow me to mix them and have a nice color range. And we're going to start off by just using these for our base with our tree pieces and then come back in and hit it with some highlights, hit it with some extra colors that we're gonna use for these. And might even touch up with a little bit of white in there just to give it a little bit of extra on the edges. Since I am doing this in real time, and I might speed up a section or two just to you know, give you guys a break. <laughs> but I know a lot of you say you love watching me paint, so I'm gonna try and do that as little as possible. I am gonna dual wield these two pieces of wood, and we're gonna paint them at the same exact time. So you can see it's not gonna take me any more time to do this piece, it's not gonna take me any different paint, and you can still get the same exact finish using the same exact technique from one to the other. If you have a palette and you want to use that, you go right ahead. I just use paper plate, you know, put my paint on there. And also we're going to be doing a lot of back and forth kind of blending. So whatever you have, you want to make sure that you have something that you can do that so you can keep dipping into that blended color as well. We're not just going to use these individually. We're going to be mixing them together. And I like you know, the space as well as how it's shiny. So it just glides right back and forth instead of using a piece of paper or something like that or a paper towel to try and blend the colors. It allows me to come back in and get it. If you have a paint palette, you want to use that, it will work the same. So do what makes you fuzzy inside. Okay, this works for me. Some options, you know, it's a tutorial, right? So I got to give you guys options. I know that a lot of people do not like sketching or they feel like it's too much for them. Use painter's tape to create your lines. So I just want to show you that real quick. So if you're like, Brandy, what the hell are you talking about? This is what I was talking about. So find the beginning of where you want your tree and then you're going to put your painter's tape down like this. Okay, and if you want, you can just leave that there like that and start from there and just go out. I like to kind of layer mine a little bit and you can move these however you want and I'm creating them a little bit longer than the last and having them like this so they slant outwards. So here's the top of our tree, here's the middle and of course you can adjust these however you want. It doesn't have to be perfect. 
you know, adjust them however you want your tree. And what you're going to do is you will take your paint, I done lost the brush, you'll take your paint and you will have your paint on here and you will go from here up, from here up, from here up, and then you have the base of the outside of your tree. Another option if you are not good at painting and do not judge my crusties. <laughs> That's all. I listen, it still works. It's sticky. I've used been using this thing for two years. Okay. So you can take any kind of stencil and put on here and create your tree. I would also be mindful of the type. If you notice this stencil, it almost looks like a tree already. And since we're create, we're only painting half our tree on these pieces. This is if you're painting a whole tree, you know, you put it right in the center and you start and you bring one down. But what I'm saying for this is you take it, find your top, and then you'll blot it with your colors. And then you're going to just take it, match it up, blot it with your colors, take it, match it up, blot it with your colors. And then, of course, fill in as you go and stop as far down. And then you have the stencil outline for a really beautiful hand-painted tree. Now, I'm just going to come in and do this with a pencil. And I'm going to hold this up so I kind of have a little, I don't know how that mark got there. How that mark it there? All right. So I'm just going to come in and this, obviously you can see how much bigger this is than this. I just didn't, th when this was shorter, it looked a little fat and I didn't like how fat the board looked compared to, listen, I, I just, <laughs> this is how I'm rolling with it. I like the way that this board looked this size. Okay. You cut your wood the way you want to cut your wood. I'm going to just kind of eyeball this and just start. And I like using a pencil because if I want to come back and erase it, I can just come back and erase it. And so I do top, middle, and I'm going to start and try to make sure it's the same angle and bring it out. And then the bottom is going to be bigger and better than the last two. Okay. And then I like to kind of just do a little trunk. It's going to be a nice thick trunk. There we go. And here we go. So here's our first one and we're going to do another one on here. I have personally found that the worst thing to do whenever you're doing something like this is to start out with your light colors. It always gets lost in the darker colors. So I'm going to start off. And I hope you guys can see this because I really want you to feel like you can do this at home. I'm going to start off using our darker colors. Okay. So I'm going to just take the darkest one and put it at the very top of our paintbrush. And then I'm going to take a little bit of this, which is our medium ish green. And then I'm not going to just go right on here because you also are going to want to make sure that you are drying this in between the layers. You do not want all this clumpy paint on here. It's going to leave little raised bumps on here. It's not going to look professional or nice. So to accomplish that, this is what I said I was I love using the paint palette or not paint palette the plate for and you can also use the little I don't forgot what it was called forgive me about that now I don't like how this kind of blends out with the light color so I'm just going to tap in some dark and tap in a little bit more because we want the dark to be the most dominant on the bottom layer so now I like that. So we're going to come in and start here. This way, I just move the camera, people. So this way you don't have to, I don't have to keep holding it up and I can get a better handle on it. So here we go. Now I'm taking this at an angle and you see how the top is down and we're meeting it at our tip here, maybe even a little bit further. And you can play with this because you can always come back a little bit and mess with it. That's why we're keeping this nice and thin going to press it at its angle and we're going to just pull it up. Oh, I am nervous. Maybe that's a little too close. <laughs> Maybe that's a little too close because I'm not trying to get that paint on my live edge. 
Okay, so if you have this issue where some of the paint came off, not a big deal. Just come back in and fill it in like that. And you're probably not even going to see this. We're going to layer this joint up. Okay, so see how it just kind of blended back in. There you go. So I'm going to do the same thing on this one. Oops, my hand got a little wiggly there. And just come back down. Like I said, if you run out of paint, it's not a big deal. Just come back down. This is your first layer. It does not have to be precise. You are just getting this one here. It's so pretty, though. I love when the colors blend together like that. It's just so pretty to me. All right. And again, same process. We're going to do the same process for the entire outskirts of this and I'm going to speed up the video right here for you because we're doing the same thing and I want you guys to be able to see it I'm not going to speed it up too much this way you can watch the process and I'm also going to readjust the camera so you can get a good view of the whole thing as I go down doing this layer Now that we have our base on here, I'm going to just blow dry it real quick and we're going to go in between creating other little extensions of this dark color. Real quick while I'm doing this this way, anybody is confused why it is important to dry this, I'm just going to show you. So we're just going to take a little bit of the same color, right? And I'm going to just on the plate, I'm going to do two pieces like this. Okay, say so these are our extensions of our tree, right? We're going to not dry it, okay? And then we're going to come in. I'm going to get a different paintbrush. We're going to come in, and then we're going to do another line. So what's happening here? It's already taking away the dominance. See how this is just moving the... We don't want that to happen. We do not want this to be able to take place while we're painting at all. So when we're drying it allows these marks to stay dominant so we can see them through our painting. I'm going to hold the brush like this and we're kind of just going to come through and create thin, longer strokes. Now that that's all dry, we're going to come in with our medium color and our lightest color. Oh, piece of dog hair. Look at that. It's crazy to me how the dog hair just gets everywhere all the time. Like, why? Ugh. Okay. So we're going to take in, we're going to, <laughs> we're going to come in with our medium color and our lightest color. And we're going to go in between all of these gaps now. And then we're going to do our tree trunk and our roots. In the video that I created this first, I did the tree trunk first. And I got to be honest with you, it was beautiful. I love how the piece turned out. But I want to see if I can get that trunk to kind of show through in our final result just to give it a little bit more of a realistic look so i'm just going about it differently this time bear with me guys it's going to turn out good anyway i promise no matter what we're doing here there's still a few gaps and I want to extend the pieces out just a little bit more so I'm gonna just create another color variation of the green this one has a little bit of the three and again in case I hadn't said it if you just drag it sideways like this it'll mix your color completely so you want to kind of hold the brush off to the side at a little bit of an angle so this way you will see all the different colors in those strokes you can do this as much with the different color variations 
or as little as you want before you get to the next step of this. For the stem, I'm just going to mix a little bit of the brown and the black together. Got to get more brown on there. Oof. All right, there we go. And then we're going to start at the top and at the very edge, and we're just going to drag it down. Now that our trunks are on here, I actually want to extend the bottom out just a little bit more. I done lost the damn brush. Where did I put that thing? How do, how do I go nowhere and literally move a plate and a paintbrush and I lost, oh, here it is. It was under the heat gun. <laughs> okay. So we're going to extend this out a little bit. And I'm going to just go back in with that dark color and that medium. And there we go. And we're going to just kind of bring this up. And then we're going to do that here too. And don't be afraid to go in where you already stopped your edge. If you're using the same exact blend technique that I showed you with the dark and the light, you can just come right in and go over it and it's going to just blend right together. You're not going to notice you put that extra one here. I want to add a few really light highlights. So I'm just going to take this and I'm actually going to hold this sideways and do thin little pokes like this. Just drag it. If you want to use a sponge for this next part or if you have a sea sponge that would work fine i'm going to use a sponge at the very end and i'm going to just take this as a napkin one of my napkins my little crumb bits that are off here to the side and i'm just going to kind of you know fold it up so it looks a little wonky we got some extra little you know pieces dangling around here and I'm going to then take this and pounce it into our brown and black color that we have here. And I'm going to add a little bit of the green colors. And I'm going to switch back and forth as we're doing this. And I'm going to get up as close as I can on here so you guys can see. Make sure this is dry, okay? If you don't make sure this is dry, it's going to blend. You want these to be different. These are going to look like our leaves and we're going to make sure we're going with the stroke of the brushes so they're just kind of overlapping and just pounce it throughout our tree in different spots with this color and we're going to come back with another color Once that has completely dried, now you're going to take your next two colors because we're going to pounce this two more times and make sure that we're hitting all the extra little gaps in here. And then we're going to come back in with a highlight. For our next pounce, I'm taking less black this time because remember I like to do the darkest first. So now I'm taking less black and using a little bit of brown and some of this dark green and I'm pouncing it off a little bit and then we're going to come in and do our board. So we have our darks in here, we got our pounces and all that and now we're going to take some of that medium green and some of that dark green and we're going to pounce in the spots and just cover in that wood. See how it's giving it a whole different look and that little bit of a 3D effect there over our dark pieces. And you don't do this real heavy. 
like you did the other pieces. If you want, you can come back in, I'll show you, and add a few dark spots. Okay, just be sparing with it. Don't get too wild because you don't want that to be overly dominant. You don't really see trees that have like black and brown leaves. This is just kind of giving us a little bit of a breakup in here and cover in our pieces. Before we get to our last step, I just want to kind of show you the different steps and why we do what we do or why I did what I did so you really understand this process. I love that I did not put the trunk in until later because as you can see, you can faintly see this going all the way up. It is giving it a very realistic look. And you can see here, our long pieces are still popping through. And then you can also see all the pouncing, the colors. It is giving it that 3D effect slightly on our branches. Once we go in here with the highlighter, this is the fun part. This is where you really see it come to life. Because right now you're kind of like, oh, is it or isn't it? I promise the highlighting is going to look amazing. So we're going to start with the antique wax. And I'm going to show you, or the antique white. <laughs> and I'm going to show, actually, I have a plate over here that is kind of empty. I really don't want to put it on that. Um, I'm going to show you what I didn't show you in the video, how you can create those layers and it's going to give you that appearance and you get to have fun with this. This is actually my favorite. My favorite part of anything is once I get past the point of having to, you know, the first coat and then I get to add on my little accents. That's always the best part for me. So I'm just taking a little sponge. I'm going to cut off a nice little section here. Okay, I almost cut a finger off. And then we're going to use the edge of this to just kind of dab in here a little bit. You don't want it to have too much on here. Okay, again, we're gonna make sure that our pieces are completely, completely dry. So the fun part about having these is just pick a spot, okay? So I see this right here, it looks a little dominant to me. I'm gonna turn this sucker into the end of its own tree branch. And we're gonna do that just by kind of highlighting it and going in. And then you can highlight this as little or as much as you want and just pounce it. Look at that. Right up to the middle of the tree. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And we're going to continue doing this for the entire part. And especially doing it on the very edges because it's going to really bring in that end aspect of your tree branches. Look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. And you can create as many of these as you want, as little as you want. I'm going to come back in with some white and do a couple extra highlights here. But I'm going to just now sit and do this to both these boards. I'm just kind of finishing up right here on our larger piece and I really hope at this point you guys can see how you can take this vanilla paint and kind of create your 3D effect with these tree branches. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have ever seen this or if you have used this before to kind of get that appearance. I absolutely think this is gorgeous. There are, I mean, obviously there's a ton of painting techniques and I am not, I am not no painting professional. When I give you guys tips and information, like this is just stuff that I have done over the years, DIYing or 
doing artist type things and it's worked for me and I just love the outcome of them. So in case anybody ever in these tutorials is like, Brandy, that's not blah, blah, blah. Listen, it works for me. This is how I like to create my pieces and I just want to share with you guys what works for me. I mean, seriously, look at that. It's gorgeous, right? Like how beautiful is it? And it's super easy to do. It just takes a little bit of time. So these both turned out absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to dry these up and let's put some accents on them. I'm going to use these little stars for the tops of these trees. Now I'm trying to cut these off of here. This is not the easiest little thing and I'm not trying to lose a finger here. Um, of course, I got to find something difficult, right? I decided to paint my stars just to give us a little bit of a color difference up here at the top. And I'm going to use my Gorilla Glue Gel to attach all of these and there really is no right or wrong way to apply your buttons or your little accent pieces I kind of just eyeball it up and pick a couple spots I used to do a show called try it Tuesday well a show <laughs> a series on my channel called try it Tuesday and um, no, it's not like Sammy's. If you guys know Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs, it's not like hers. I used to take things and I would try them. And I did one with glue. And I took a hammer to several pieces. And the only one that really did not break was the piece that I had this Gorilla Glue Gel on. And ever since I'm like, sold. Not going to use anything else. That was it for me. It was love at first gluing. That's going to be it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you loved how these pieces turn out and it helps you create your own handmade Christmas trees. Stay tuned for the review. Let's go out.